Your ears are going to hear the year of Jesus' return. Again, I am not giving you a day, and I am not giving you an hour, and I'm not one of those guys who prophesied falsely a date. (laughs) That's not what I'm giving you. But I am showing you through Scripture, through extra-biblical sources, through historic sources, through astronomical sources, through even military sources. I've shown you through Greek through Jewish history and historians, people hostile to Christ, people who are not Christians, all proving the biblical prophecies and biblical narrative. I'm just excited. I'm excited. This is a cool part. Okay, Daniel 8, 14. He said to me, it will take 2,300 evenings and mornings. Then the sanctuary will be reconsecrated. 2,300 evenings and mornings uh, represents 2,300 years. Okay, now listen, Amos, Prophet Amos, chapter 3, verse 7, surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. What that means is that this is capable of being revealed to you in the same way that the Magi knew the first coming of Jesus Christ. The Magi of today, the wise men of today, can know the second coming of Jesus Christ using Daniel's prophecy and biblical prophecy. Current creation of world date is said to be 3760 BC, which would be one on the Hebrew calendar. Now, this is 60 years off. And as we saw from the Encyclopedia Britannica, that makes sense because of the mistakes that started to be made after 70 AD. Between 70 and AD and 200 AD, the calendar was messed up. And it is 60 years off. And I will show you and prove to you that it is 60 years off. When you use urban population data, and look folks, this is earth data. This is from the Socioeconomic Data and Applications Center, okay? This is an official source, hallelujah, says that our population, our city level, our historic data is from 3700 BC to AD 2000. That's not the only source. Spatial data when you are going to compile understanding human history, we really can only accurately go back again to 3700 BC to AD 2000 or 2020. Now we're in 2020. So the really, the only, the furthest we can go back accurately is 3700 BC. You can study both of these, both the historical urban population V1. You can actually download it. I have the link in the PDF, you can download that data and you can see that the furthest we can go back accurately is 3,700 and the furthest we can go back according to other sources as well is 3,700, okay? This is linked, all right? You can see this. Now, back to the PDF, hallelujah. Lots of people here, this is a big moment. That's why you've come here, okay? Now the calendar is 60 years off, one BC, equals uh, 3,760 in Hebrew. That is not, that is not uh, accurate, okay? We're gonna show you how this actually works, all right? It's currently off. Jesus' return in millennial kingdom, Hebrew year, 6,000 to 7,000. That's agreed from all the sources that I showed you earlier. Daniel's 2,300 year prophecy in Daniel 8, 14. If 1 BC is actually year 3,700, not 3,760, then 2,300 years after would be the year 6,000. Again, how far back does accurate human data go? It only goes back to 3,700 BC. How far back? It only goes to 3,700 BC. So now you will see the return of Jesus Christ. Year 1, 3700 B.C. Year 3700, which would be 1 B.C., is the birth of Jesus. Year 3701 would be 1 A.D., just to show you how the calendar counts. 3731 would be 31 A.D., Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. 3770 would be 70 A.D., 40 Passovers from the crucifixion of Jesus. 
5720 would be 2020 AD, and that's the current year when using the accurate Hebraic calendar. 6,000 would be 2,300 AD, the establishment of the Millennial Kingdom. 7,000 will be the end of the Millennial Kingdom, the Battle of Armageddon, the New Heaven, and the New Earth, which will be 3,300 AD. Christ's return will be 2,300 AD. Jesus will return in the year 2300 AD. There will come a resistance to this teaching and this truth. You will see it break out. I want you to hold fast to the truth. You've seen it. I need you to go out. The Holy Spirit needs you to go out and share the truth. Not just this video. You go out and verbally share it. You spread the truth everywhere that you can. The return of Jesus is the year 2300 AD. I have not given you a day or an hour because I do not know it. But I do know this, Jesus will return in the year 2300 AD. Look, 6,000 millennial kingdom minus 5,720, which is the current year, equals 280 years. That's our current year, 2020 AD. That means 5,720 plus 280 years equals 6,000. That means that 2020 AD is 280 years until the return of Jesus in 2300 AD. Jesus' second advent is 2300 AD. The Antichrist week in Daniel, the seven years, will be 2293 AD. The incorrect current year of 5780 plus 280 years will equal 6060 on the Hebrew calendar, which is on purpose. The deception is on purpose. The Antichrist will arrive 6053 on current Hebrew calendar. Conclusion, Roman calendar established to specifically tra track Christ, hence 1 BC to 1 AD birth timeline, and all prophetic events since Daniel are accurate on the Roman calendar. Therefore, 2300 AD is fulfillment of Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, return of Jesus Christ. This is not a joke, and it is not a game. Disciple, you must go out and share this truth with other people. This is not about me. I am no one. But this is the truth. People are going to look into this and see that this is the truth. And the final generation will be ready and prepared in the same way that the Magi and people during John the Baptist time knew that the Messiah was coming, they will know and they will have a good, accurate timeline. 2300 AD, the return of Jesus Christ. The Antichrist will show up 2293 AD. There will be seven years of Antichrist total power and three and a half of those years will be the great tribulation, unlike anything we have ever seen before. Colossians 1.17, he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Jesus is the center of the entire biblical narrative and of human history. Both the Edemic year 1 to 7,000 and Roman calendar 3700 BC to 3300 AD exist to tell his story. Between 1 BC and 1 AD, Jesus becomes a one-year-old. Then the clock begins, and we arrived at 2300 AD. Is the return of Jesus Christ and the fulfillment of Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. Now I'm going to address what the devil will present to you as a result of hearing that. You're going to hear, no man knows the day or the hour, and we're going to walk through that together. Let's read it together. Thank you so much for being with me. I love you guys. God loves you so much. You are a special people. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, the day and hour unknown. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. I want to testify that I do not know the day or the hour, and I have not given you a day or an hour. I've simply verified prophecy. Now, Jesus in Matthew 24, 42 says, Right after saying that, he says, therefore, keep watch, 
because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. So we're supposed to watch. And then verse 44, he says, so you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you do not expect him. How can you watch and be ready if you have absolutely no idea? Jesus is saying no man knows the day or the hour because the prophecies do not give a day or an hour. The prophecies give the year. And that's why everyone who's always given you a specific date forever has been wrong. Okay, so Jesus himself tells us to keep watch. Now, no one knows the day or the hour. I'm going to explain to you the Jewish idiom of no one knows the day or the hour. And in fact, it's in the PDF. So if you want to follow along, we can read it together. It says, no one knows the day or hour is a Jewish idiom for the Feast of Trumpets, also known as Yom Teruah. Traditionally, no one would know until the crescent of the moon is visible. This is why the people and the priest are to keep watch. He knows, the priest knows the general time, the season, the year, the month, perhaps even the week, though he does not know the exact day and hour. Saying Christ returns in 2300 AD, according to Daniel 8, is no different than saying Yang Teruah is in Tishrei. If we truly use the moon to determine the moment the first of Tishrei was coming or beginning, we would simply have to watch the sky and wait. In the same way, if we know Jesus returns in 2300 AD, we should keep watch and prepare and prepare our children and prepare our grandchildren, but we don't know the day or hour, and we simply have to watch the sky and wait. Knowing that the first coming of Christ completely coincided with the biblical feasts, the second coming definitely coincides with the biblical feasts. In fact, here's how you know that's true. The first feast, Jesus died at Passover in the grave for unleavened bread, resurrected at first fruits, sends the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, which is the Feast of Weeks. So every single feast coincided with Christ's first coming. Every feast coincides with his second coming as well, the, the fall feast, which would be trumpets, which is the return, atonement, which is the repentance of all the people that survived that time, and then uh, tabernacles, which is the actual spending time with God, which Jesus came and tabernacled among us. He will come and tabernacle again. Zechariah prophesied that during the millennial kingdom, you can research this, that we will actually keep tabernacles annually for the entire 1,000 years. And any nation who doesn't go to keep tabernacles will not receive rain for that year. They'll have a, a hard time. So there's literally, tabernacles is a huge part of this because God tabernacled with Adam in Genesis, in the garden. Jesus tabernacled with us when he came. Jesus tabernacles with us when he rules as Messiah.